This is lesson 15 in our Calculus 2 series, Improper Integrals. So far we've seen integrals of this type, integral from a to b, f of x, and here a and b are always finite, and f of x is always continuous over the interval a, b. But what about integrals of this type? We have integral 0 to 1 of 1 over x. We know that x can't equal 0 in 1 over x. So what does this integral even mean? Let's take a look at this graphically. What area would this be representing? The graph of 1 over x, remember, looks like this in, in the first quadrant, and down here has another, another uh, curve, right? So from 0 to 1, we're talking about the area under the curve from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So it's this area in here. Now we know that this graph is asymptotic to the y-axis, so we know that this area is unbounded. And by that I mean we couldn't take a finite amount of string and put a circle around it, right? It's unbounded, we can't do that. But what I want to introduce to you is that this area still might have a finite value. I know that's not intuitive when you first think about it. If it's unbounded, it should be an infinite number. This area should turn out to be infinity. But actually, there are some graphs that for an unbounded area, we could cover that area with, say, a finite amount of carpeting, that kind of thing. So it could have a finite measure even though it's an unbounded area. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that concept in a few minutes. But I want to introduce also some other integrals that we haven't talked about yet. What about integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared? Now clearly we haven't seen a bound that is infinite, as we have here. And graphically speaking, what does this look like? 1 over x squared has a similar curve in the first quadrant. And this is the area under the graph from 1 to infinity. It's another unbounded area. We don't know yet if it's finite or if it's infinite. As well, here we have negative infinity to 0, e to the 2x. e to the 2x looks like this. From negative infinity to 0, we're talking about this shaded area. Again, it's an unbounded area. We don't yet know if it's finite. And what about an integral from negative 1 to 2 of 1 over x? At first glance, this looks okay because negative 1 can go into 1 over x and 2 can go into 1 over x, but there's a discontinuity at x equals 0. So we have to look at now, from now on, whenever we see an integral, we have to take note, is there a discontinuity of this function over this interval? This is something we haven't seen yet, but from now on, we have to look at this for our integrals. So we know that there's a discontinuity at x equals 0, and graphically speaking, we're talking about this area from negative 1 to 0, and then from 0 to 2. Again, we don't yet know if that area is going to be infinite or finite. We do know, however, that it is unbounded. So integrals are considered to be improper when one or both of the bounds are infinite, or there is a discontinuity over the interval AB over which we are integrating. It could happen at one of the endpoints, the discontinuity, or it could happen inside the interval. Now let's talk about how an unbounded area can have finite measure. So I'm going to create an area for you that is unbounded, but we're going to know that it has a finite measure, that has a finite area. I want you to consider this interval from 0 to 1. I'm going to start at 0, I'm going to go half the remaining distance, and then half the remaining distance, and then half the remaining distance, and let's see what I get. If I start at 0 and go half the remaining distance, I'm going a distance of 1 half. Then if I go half that remaining distance, I'm going a distance of 1 quarter. Then half that remaining distance is a distance of 1 eighth, then 1 sixteenth, 1 thirty second, 1 sixty fourth, right? And we know that the sum of all these numbers is 1. So 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 thirty second plus 1 sixty fourth plus dot 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 is equal to 1. Now, let's take a look at this area. I'm going to put some rectangles together. They all have a width of 1. And I'm going to make this first rectangle in a height of 1 half. So its area is 1 half. The next rectangle I'm going to make a height of 1 quarter and a width of 1. So its area is 1 quarter. The next one has area 1 eighth, then 1 sixteenth, then 1 thirty second. Now each time I go down, I'm going to half the height, but I'm never going to get to 0. I'm going to approach a 0 height, but I'll never get to 0 because I'm still going to go half of the height that was there. So it's the same set of numbers that we're adding up, up here, 
we're adding up for the area. So this area, including all of the rectangles, is unbounded, because we can keep doing this as x goes towards infinity, but we know that that total area is equal to 1. So that means we could take one square unit of carpeting and cover this entire thing. So we have an unbounded area that has a finite measure. This area is equal to 1. So this is the idea that we have, we're looking at these integrals that represent unbounded areas, and we want to know, is it a finite area or is it not? So let's take a look at the first example we had, integral from 0 to 1, 1 over x, and let's take a look at how we can make some sense of, of this and compute it. Remember, all bets are off for the rules that we had before because all the integration we've been doing is, has been for when a function, f of x, is continuous over a, b. And now we don't have that. So we cannot use the same rules. We can't take an antiderivative and then plug in the bounds. You can't plug 0 into ln x. So we have to find a way to get around this. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull off, since we have the discontinuity at the end point, we're going to pull that off, we're going to turn that into an a, and say, let's take the limit as a goes to 0. Now notice the integral we have is from 0 to 1. So what we want to do is we want to take the integral from a to 1 and then push a towards 0. So a would be, for example, here, and we would be taking the integral from a to 1 and then let a go towards 0. But notice a is going towards 0 only from the right in this case because the integral that we originally had was from 0 to 1. It's to the right of 0. So a goes to 0 from the right. So now we're here. Now we want to solve this integral as usual. We take the antiderivative, plug in the bounds, then take the limit. So taking the antiderivative, we have ln of absolute x going from 1 to a. Then once we plug that in, we'll take the limit as a goes to 0 from the right. So because these values, a to 1, are all positive, I dropped my absolute value sign here. Now we're going to plug in 1 and a and subtract. So we have limit as a goes to 0 from the right, ln 1 minus ln a. Now we know ln 1 is equal to 0, and as a goes to 0 from the right, as a goes to 0 from the right, our corresponding y values, ln a, goes towards negative infinity. So what we have here is a negative, negative infinity, positive infinity. This tells us that the area is infinite here. So this turns out to be an infinite area. Okay, it's unbounded and infinite. Now because this improper integral is not a finite number, we say the integral diverges. If the improper integral was equal to a finite number, we would say it converges. So this integral we just solved diverges. Let's take a look at another one. In this problem, we have an infinite bound. Now notice, we said in the last problem that from now on, we have to look out for discontinuities of our integrand. What's our integrand? 1 over x squared. Where is this not continuous? What x values can you not plug in here? Well, we can't plug in x equals 0. But that's okay, because that's not in the interval we have. We have the interval from 1 to infinity, so there aren't any discontinuities. The only thing that makes this integral improper is the infinity as a bound. So again, this is the area we're looking at. Here's 1 over x squared. We're talking about this area. We know it's unbounded, but is it finite or is it infinite? Well, let's see. How can we deal with this? Again, we can't actually plug in infinity. So we have to find a way to get around having this infinite bound. And what we want to do is, just as we did in the last problem, we want to pull this infinity out, put in a b, and let b go towards infinity, take a limit. Now I'm calling this b and not a because it's an upper bound and not a lower bound, right? So convention has it to call this b. And notice that we don't have to worry about a left or a right because the only way you could get to infinity is from the left, right? So we don't really have to worry about a left or right limit here. So we can say limit b goes to infinity, integral 1 to b, 1 over x squared. And now we're going to integrate as usual, plug in our bounds, then take the limit. So the limit b goes to infinity carries here. We're going to write this as x to the negative 2 so that we can integrate. It becomes x to the negative 1 over negative 1 or negative 1 over x. Then we're going to plug in b and 1 and subtract. We plug in b, plug in 1, and we're here. We get negative 1 over b plus 1. 
Now, what happens as B goes towards infinity? As B goes towards infinity, this negative 1 over B goes towards 0. So this limit is equal to 1. So that says we have an unbounded but finite area, and the integral converges to 1. Remember, converges is when we have an improper integral that equals a finite number. Otherwise, we say the integral diverges. So this one is equal to 1, so this integral converges. And now let's take a look at another. Here we have negative infinity to 0, e to the 2x. Again, there aren't any discontinuities over this interval, so the only problem we have here is the infinite bound. So let's pull that bound out, call it a, and let a go towards negative infinity. And again, the only way to get to negative infinity is from the right, so we don't have to worry about a plus or minus here. And that's this area that we're looking for here. And just to have a visual of what's happening with a going to negative infinity, we're talking about, say, a being here, taking the integral from a to 0, and then let, letting a go towards negative infinity. So what do we do now that we pulled out our infinite bound into the limit? We can just go ahead and integrate like usual, plug in our bounds and subtract. Integrating, we get 1 half e to the 2x. Plug in 0, plug in a and subtract. Simplifying, we have 1 half. e to the 0 was 1, so this becomes a 1 half. And then we have minus a 1 half e to the 2a. So we're here now, what's written in black. And now we can take the limit, as a goes to negative infinity, what happens to e to the 2a? As a goes to negative infinity, e to the 2a goes towards 0, so this part goes towards 0, which takes this entire term to 0. So we have 1 half minus 0, which is 1 half. So this integral converges to 1 half. That says this area measures to 1 half square unit, even though it is unbounded. It's an unbounded finite area. Let's take a look at another one. This one's a little bit more complicated. Let's take a look at what's going on. We've got integral 0 to infinity, 1 over x to the third. Now, first thing I notice is that I have an infinite limit. So I know that this is an improper integral, and I'm going to have to pull this infinity out, call it b, take a limit. But look what else is happening here. We have x equals 0 as one of our bounds, but x equals 0 is a discontinuity for this function. So that is also improper. So we're going to have to pull, put an a here and pull out limit as a goes to 0. But the thing is, we don't want to do that all in the same integral. What we want to do is to break this integral into two. And we can do that at any point in this interval. So I'm going to choose a nice easy point like x equals 1, right? x is going from 0 to infinity. So I'm going to choose x equals 1, and I'm going to look at this integral as integral 0 to 1 plus integral 1 to infinity. Again, we're doing this because we don't want to have two improper bounds in the same integral. So if we separate this integral into integral 0 to 1 plus integral 1 to infinity, now we only have one improper bound in each. And again, you could split it up at any point in 0 to infinity, any point from the original, in the original interval. Now that we're here, each of these gets treated as an improper integral. The first one we're pulling out, limit a goes to 0 from the right and we're putting in an a as a lower bound. For the second one, we put in a b, and we pull out limit b goes to infinity. Now, we solve each of these integrals, as usual. So they simplify to negative 1 over 2x squared. But now we've got this first one, limit as a goes to 0 from the right. We've got the integral uh, from 1 to a, so we've got to plug in 1, plug in a, and subtract. Here we've got to plug in b, plug in 1, and subtract. So now let's just take a look at what's written in black here. We have negative 1 half minus negative 1 over 2a squared. That's limit as a goes to 0 from the right, plus limit as b goes to infinity negative 1 over 2b squared minus a negative 1 half. So let's take a look at what's happening. As a goes to 0 from the right, what's happening to 1 over 2a squared? As a goes to 0 from the right, this is a 1 over 0 plus. That's a positive infinity. 
And notice the two negatives made a positive, so this becomes a positive infinity. It's a negative one-half plus infinity. So I could put that in there if that helps. Negative one-half plus infinity is equal to still infinity. And here we have a limit as b goes to infinity. As b goes to infinity, we have 1 over 2b squared. This fraction is going to go to 0. So this is going to be 0 plus 1 half. So that's 1 half. So we have infinity plus a half. That's infinity. And so our final, so our final computation is that this limit is infinite and the integral diverges. But anyway, what I want to mention is that as soon as we see that one part of the integral diverges, we don't even have to compute the rest. As soon as we see one part of the integral diverges, we know that there's an infinite area around, and we're done. It diverges. So we didn't even have to compute this part to finish. We could just say, oh, it's infinity, diverges, done. Let's take a look at another one. This integral from negative 2 to 2, 1 over x dx. So when I look at this, again, negative 2 you can plug in here, 2 you can plug in there. So it looks like what you might be tempted to do would be just, and this is wrong, but we might be tempted to take the antiderivative ln of absolute x, plug in the bounds, subtract, and get 0. And say, oh, look at that. That integral is equal to 0. What this is essentially saying, and I'll show you why it's wrong in a second, but what this is essentially saying is that the area from negative 2 to 0 comes with a negative sign because it's under the x-axis. The area from 0 to 2 comes with a positive sign because it's over the x-axis, and this is the exact same area. They cancel each other out. So yes, that's true. It is the same area, one with a negative, one with a positive. However, this integral does not converge to zero. And let's talk about why. Remember that this rule of taking the antiderivative, plugging in your bounds and subtract, is only true when f, our integrand, is continuous over the interval. And this is not true in this case. 1 over x is not continuous from negative 2 to 2, so those rules do not apply. And we have to set this up as two improper integrals. So we must separate it from negative 2 to 0, because that's the discontinuity, and 0 to 2. Now, each of these we know how to handle. We pull off the 0, let b go to 0 from the left. Pull off the 0, let a go to 0 from the right. So let's just go back up to the graph and see where a and b are so we understand why it's left and right limits. So here we're taking the area from negative 2 to b, and b is going to 0 from the left. On this side, we've got the area from a to 2, right? That's this area. That's this area here and this area here. And a is going to 0 from the right. So that's where we're getting the left and the right limits from here. And again, at this point, once we took care of the improper bounds, and now we can integrate, plug in our bounds, and subtract. Because now 1 over x is continuous on this interval, and is continuous on this interval. So we integrate, we plug in our bounds, and subtract. Now we need to take our limits. So let's see what's happening here. As b goes to 0 from the left, absolute b goes to 0 from the right. So we've got a 0 plus in here. And if what's inside the ln goes to 0 from the right, those ln values go towards negative infinity. So here we have a negative infinity. This is ln 2, so negative infinity minus ln 2. And then that's negative infinity. Once I see a negative infinity show up, I know that this integral diverges, and therefore, the original diverges. I don't even care about this one. I know that, there's, that this part of the integral is infinite, so I know that the integral from negative 2 to 0 is infinite, and so this integral diverges. But 
If we want to, we can just go and check out the other side as well. ln2 minus ln a. a is going to 0 from the right. So again, if a goes to 0 from the right, ln a, negative infinity. So we have a negative infinity plus ln2. Still negative infinity. This integral diverges from 0 to 2. Therefore, the original integral diverges. Okay, so again, every time now we see an integral, we have to check to see if the integrand, the function inside the integral, is continuous on the interval. If not, we have to separate it at that discontinuity, and that's what we did here. We know that 1 over x does not exist when x is equal to 0, so we separate the integrals and treat them both as improper. Now you'll notice that whenever we integrate 1 over x to the p from 1 to infinity, it's going to converge if p is greater than 1 and it will diverge for p less or equal to 1. Also, the integral of 1 over x to the p from 0 to 1 will converge for p less than 1 and diverge for p greater than or equal to 1. And you'll want to keep this in mind. It'll help when you're solving these integrals. Now let's take a look at another problem. We've got integral 0 to infinity, x e to the negative 2x. So let's talk about this one for a second. I look at this and right away I know that I have an infinite bound. So I know that I have an improper integral. I should also check that the function is continuous on the rest of this interval. Are there any x values that we can't plug in to this function? No. This function is continuous for x values greater than or equal to 0. So the only problem is this improper bound. So we want to pull that out, make it a b, and call it b goes to infinity. Now, let's take a look at this integral. This is going to be integration by parts. So now it's going to get tricky. You've got by parts with an improper integral. But you know how to do this by parts. Forget about the limit as b goes to infinity right now. Just work on this integral. Just as you carry down your work, just put limit b goes to infinity in front of everything you do. At the very end is when we take the limit as b goes to infinity. So I want to give you a few minutes now. I want you to please pause the video and work out this integral by parts. Using the Liate guidelines, we want to make u equals x. So then dv is going to be e to the negative 2x dx. We compute du to be dx and v to be the antiderivative here. So that's negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. So using integration by parts, we're here so far. And just remember, I'm doing all of that integration by parts. I'm just putting a big bracket around it and throwing the limit on the outside. So I'm not going to worry about this limit till the very end. Let's just work with what's inside the brackets. Here we're integrating now e to the negative 2x, which we know negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. So we had a positive 1 half here times a negative 1 half that comes from the integration. So we have negative 1 quarter e to the negative 2x there. And we can take all of that at the same time going from b to 0. So now I'm going to plug in b, plug in 0. I'm going to simplify and then take the limit. So simplifying, we're here, what's written in black. And letting b go to infinity, let's see what happens. Here we have b going to infinity, but e to the negative 2b goes to 0 as b goes to infinity. So we have an infinity times 0. We're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule here. Also, as b goes to infinity, e to the negative 2b goes to 0, so this term goes away. So we've got this one going to 0, we've got a plus 1 fourth. So we need to figure out what this limit is. And when we want to solve it, a limit that's infinity times 0, we want to rewrite it so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. It needs to be infinity over infinity or 0 over 0. So since this is an e to the negative 2b, it makes most sense to bring that down to the denominator, write this b over e to the 2b. I pull my 1 half as a factor here, my negative 1 half here. Now limit as b goes to infinity, I want to use L'Hopital's rule here with b being the variable. So the derivative of b is 1. The derivative here is 2e to the 2b, that goes in the denominator. Now I can take that limit as b goes to infinity.
right? L'Hopital's rule doesn't affect this one-fourth. The one-fourth is not changing at all as b goes to infinity. So that's just carrying down. The limit as b goes to infinity now is only applying here, since that one-fourth doesn't change. So now as b goes to infinity, e to the 2b goes to infinity. So we've got 1 over infinity. This goes to 0, and this limit is equal to 1 fourth. So that says that our integral converges to 1 fourth. We have an unbounded finite area. Let's take a look at the original integral. It's x e to the negative 2x going from 0 to infinity. That's this graph here. And we're talking about the area from 0 to infinity which is an unbounded area, but we just found out it's finite and the area is equal to one-fourth. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have integral from negative infinity to infinity. We have two improper bounds, so you're going to have to separate this into two integrals and then deal with each one separately. So I want to give you a couple minutes to work on this. Now we said if we have both bounds improper, we could split at any value in that interval. So I like easy numbers, so I'm going to split at 0. And 0 is easy to plug into trig functions too, right? So we like that. So I've got an integral negative infinity to 0 and the integral 0 to infinity here. Now this negative infinity needs to come off and we need to put an a. Let a go to negative infinity. This positive infinity needs to come off, let b go to positive infinity, integral 0 to b. Now we're going to compute each of those integrals, plug in our bounds, subtract, then take our limits. Integrating, we get 1 over pi sine pi t, plugging in 0 and a here, plugging in b and 0 here. Remember that sine of 0 is 0, so this term goes away, as does this one here. So we've got limit as a goes to negative infinity, negative 1 over pi, sine pi a. And limit as b goes to infinity, sine pi b. So what are these limits equal to? As a goes to negative infinity, what happens to sine pi a? Pi a goes to negative infinity. What happens to the sine graph as we go out towards negative infinity? The sine graph keeps oscillating. There is no limit here. Same thing here, as b goes to infinity, pi b goes to infinity, sine of infinity, what is that? There is no value for sine of infinity. That graph keeps oscillating. So this limit does not exist either. Neither of these limits exist because they're oscillating, but even if just one of them didn't exist, the integral diverges. Remember we said that if the improper integral has a finite number, then we would say the integral converges. If it doesn't, then it diverges. So in this case, we're not saying that it's an infinite area. What we're saying is that this area computation does not exist because of oscillating behavior. Let's take a look at the, um, the, the integral we were trying to compute, integral from negative infinity to infinity, cosine pi t. What does this look like graphically? Cosine pi t looks like what? Now, since this is cosine pi t, the pi is already here, so this would be 2, and this would be t equals 1, t equals negative 1, t equals negative 2, and so on. So we're talking about the area now, here, plus here, plus here, plus here, plus here, all of this area we're talking about as x goes from negative infinity to infinity. So just looking at the right half, we had 0 to b, right? And b went to infinity. So if we look at the area from 0 to b here, that would be, that would be some positive number. But then as b continued on and got to, say, here, then it would be zero, and then it would be a negative number, and it would keep oscillating. As b goes through this oscillating function, the area computation is also oscillating. So there just isn't an answer here. It's not an infinite area, it's an oscillating computation for area. So this integral diverges. There's one more topic to talk about with improper integrals, and that's the comparison theorem. That will be the subject of the next lesson. So we'll conclude this lesson here.